Five Gum. With a commercial campaign as strong as theirs, it's no wonder that that slogan lives in many of our heads rent free. And yet, the company has still managed to find themselves just a shell of what they used to be. From the original days of the OG commercials, to the gamer gum that's a thing now, today, sit back as we look back on the iconic 2010's Five Gum. How it feels to chew Five Gum. I don't know, I mean, it's alright, I guess. I mean... Stimulate your senses. Five Gum was first released in the US in March 2007, being invented by the Wrigley Company. It was released in Canada in 2008, in Russia, Europe, and Australia in 2009, and pretty much everywhere else by 2010. Five would be stylized and branded as New Five Gum when it first entered each market, with the branding being slowly dropped for just the Five Gum name. The name Five is usually associated with the marketing campaign they used to promote the gum when it first launched, but it also has the name Five due to the amount of calories that were in each stick. Which isn't really a flex by the way, since the norm for chewing gum has been to be sugar free for decades already, but hey, it looked pretty cool. And looking cool was a huge part of the reason 5Gum actually was even invented. Because, believe it or not, before 5Gum existed, this type of gum packaging did not exist. No, for real. It blew my mind too, as someone born in 2001. I never really took too much notice into gum packaging when I was like a really small child, and by the time I was a teen, most gum already came in this kind of packaging. But it didn't used to. Back in the mid-2000s, Wrigley held a majority shares over the gum market. And honestly, they still do. But, at the time, they were noticing a trend of people preferring the blister type packaging for the gum instead of the classic sticks. Only problem was, most of these gums wouldn't be able to just switch to that type of product. So instead, Wrigley set out on a mission to find a new innovative way to package sticks of gum. So they hired Four Sites Incorporated, which is now Property Ventures, to work on a new design. And, after about three years of trial and error, they finally unveiled a new packaging system. One that was slim enough to fit in your pocket, skinny enough to still fit on store shelves, and was able to hold even more gum, and it had a way cooler way to open it, and it was so hard to accidentally crush in your pocket. It was literally a breakthrough for the gum market. And when Foresight Incorporated showed Wrigley what they had invented, they didn't just decide to use it for their existing gum brands. They wanted to launch a whole new brand just to flex the packaging. Yeah, seriously. That, along with some other factors we'll get to in a minute, Five Gum was officially born. Honestly, the most memorable thing about Five Gum is hands down their commercials. I mean, come on, I know we all remember seeing these in between our favorite shows as a kid, and maybe even our dreams? The company sought to capitalize on the rise of gum being popular with kids in school, usually being used to trade for stuff, trying to make friends, and unleashing the horde of banshee kids begging for a piece. Five Gum wanted to be that gum that kids were begging for, and they tried really hard. The first campaign to launch the product was the Stimulate Your Senses campaign, the one where they had super intense yet mysterious commercials that were supposed to showcase how Five impacts one of the five human senses. There's not much to say about these that haven't been covered before, I mean they are truly iconic in the world of advertising. And Wrigley was pushing them in between Cartoon Network and MTV blocks, so the gum was broadcast to a wide range of edgy kids. They even managed to put some product placement in Guitar Hero 3. I mean, I love this game as a kid, and I still go back to it sometimes, and I somehow never noticed that. But, needless to say, it worked. And 5Gum was in the hands of kids everywhere. But, at some point along the way, stuff just stopped working. Sales were plateauing, and the Five Gum memes weren't funny anymore, they were just played out. So, Five started going in a totally different direction. They started going into a more family friendly route for a little bit, and even a horror stint there for a minute, before finally coming to their latest niche, gamers. And YouTube channel Slow Start does a really great job breaking down how Five went through several marketing phases, and it really helped me get some good info for this video, and I highly suggest you check it out. But, something I want to touch on I feel they didn't as much, was the why. Why was 5Gum going through all of these marketing campaigns? Well, I think it has something to do with the same reason Disney has the four season rule. Which, for those who don't know, it's a rule that no Disney show can go over four seasons. 
Even if it's a massively insane mega hit, it just won't happen. Because those shows are marketed for kids, and kids go through phases like a damn washing machine. So, in a basic sense, these kids are going to grow up and change pretty heavily in 4 years, as are the things that are popular with the new children that are the age they were when they first started watching. So, once the target audience for the show is gone, why try to make it for a new generation? They can't claim it as theirs, that was the show their big sister liked, or their older cousin, or whoever. And if you keep the same cast, they'll visibly get older and fall out of touch with the audience they're supposed to be connecting to in the first place. So, you scrap it, leave it as a nostalgic memory for some, and start with the new. And that's what I think 5Gum was doing. While, yes, the original campaign was insanely effective and had a massive reach and managed to drive sales up and up, it was meant for kids, man. And if you're like me and you were around 10 years old when these were coming out, by the time you're 14 or 15, you're already a totally different person still trying to figure yourself out. 5Gum isn't cool anymore. You see the memes on Facebook every day. How does it feel to stimulate your senses? Then a funny clip. We get it. We need something new, and we'll find it. Because 5Gum wasn't meant to connect with us personally. It's meant to connect with us parasocially. 5Gum knows they're not keeping fans for life. They're the cool gum to a certain age group. They're the thing people want to get in on. We see these ads as kids and think, whoa, that's cool. But as an adult, they're kind of cringe and honestly a little comical in a way. But that's enough serious talk for right now. Let's jump into the fun part of the video, going through all the flavors they've invented. Ironically, even with that marketing campaign, before doing research for this video, I probably could not tell you a 5-gum flavor except the basic ones like mint and bubblegum, but starting with the 10 varieties that you can still get today, we have Prism, which has a watermelon flavor, Flood, a strawberry flavor, Cobalt, a peppermint flavor, Rain, a spearmint flavor, Ascent, a winter flavor, RPM, which is just described as a mint flavor, and React 2, which is a mint flavor. And we can't forget the gamer gum that's taking hold of the teen gamer community, 5Gum Respawn, which comes in Cool Mint, Tropical Punch, and Pomegranate Watermelon. Now, let's get into all the flavors that are in the 5Gum Graveyard, starting with Atomic, a strong mint and cinnamon flavor, Glare, a mystery of dark fruits, Focus, an eye-opening spearmint, Beta, a hyper-sensational berry, Photon, a radiant pineapple blend. Lush, which was also known as Pulse and Swerve, was a tangy to sweet tropical flavor. Turbulent, a mouth-shaking watermelon flavor. Cirrus, a bursting blueberry flavor. Evolution, a sour to sweet citrus pear flavor. Elixir, a mouth-watering berry flavor. Tempo, which had a rhythmic burst of fruit punch. Focus, an eye-opening peppermint. Vortex, a whirlwind of green apple. Black Edition, a dark mystery of fruit flavors. Ultramarine, which had a current of cool mint. Electro 2, a tingling spearmint flavor. Zephyr, which had a blast of strawberry. Tempest, a mouthwatering watermelon flavor. Solstice, a warm to cool wintergreen flavor. Zing or Evolve, a sour to sweet bubblegum flavor. Flare, a warming cinnamon. React 2, a unique fruit flavor experience. Yes, there's also a React 2 out now that's mint flavored, but that's just the power of marketing, folks. Looking back, we get to see one of the pioneers in 2010's edgy teen marketing. While 5Gum might not get the recognition it deserves, it would be pretty lame to try to say that it didn't impact the world of advertising. The 2010s were full of these types of ads for children. And no, not this exact weird robot looking thing, but the lighting, the intensity, and even the electronic styled woman voice. And since this era, there hasn't been a lot like it since. Maybe it's just because I'm not a kid anymore. Or maybe it's the fact that the amount of people sitting down to watch classic cable television has dwindled largely since the start of the streaming era. And with that, classic advertising has had to change a lot. Most video ads now are meant for smartphone viewers. And I just don't think those hold the same weight as a TV commercial. I mean, TV commercials can be annoying, yes, but usually are pretty nostalgic, slightly clever, and can bring you back to a certain time of your life, while mobile ads are literally the devil. And with 5 now going into a gamer direction, it makes sense, as it's definitely something that won't go away with teens, probably ever, and manages to encase a large demographic just based on how many different types of gamers there are. 
But what do you think? When was the last time you experienced five gum? Maybe you have kids now yourself that like it. Or maybe you sat here the whole time being like, dude, what the hell is five gum? No matter what, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I appreciate you all watching so much. If you're still feeling pretty nostalgic, go check out the Look Back playlist. It's probably popping up on screen right now, or is about to. It's full with a bunch of videos just like this about your favorite childhood things. And of course, please subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And I will see you all in the next Look Back on August 3rd. Peace.